Today, I'm going to be making a banana pudding cheesecake. This is from the March 2012 edition of Southern Living Magazine. So, I came across some older magazines, um, some Southern Living, and I found this recipe, and I thought, gosh, that just sounds absolutely terrific, and it doesn't matter how old the recipe is if it's, if it's good, right? So, um, so you, this makes uh, 10 to 12 servings, the hands-on time, it says it's 45 minutes. Uh, total time is 11 hours, 10 minutes because it has a lot of cooling time. So what you want to do, I'm gonna tell you everything you need and then what we'll do. So you need one and a half cups of crushed vanilla wafers and I left the box out just to show you. I bought a 11 ounce box and there's not a lot left after this is how many I have left. So you do have some left um, after uh, what you're gonna use. So you need one and a half cups of finely crushed vanilla wafers. You need half a cup of chopped pecans, a fourth cup butter melted, 17 vanilla wafers, two large ripe bananas diced. I had uh, three smaller bananas. They were kind of medium, so I did three, three smaller ones. One tablespoon of lemon, or, uh, lemon juice, two tablespoons of light brown sugar, three eight ounce packages of cream cheese softened, one cup granulated sugar, three large eggs, two teaspoons vanilla, and half a cup of coarsely crushed vanilla wafers. So you see I have vanilla wafers in three different ways here. So the first thing you wanna do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You're gonna to stir together the first three ingredients. So we're gonna stir the uh, crushed vanilla wafers and the chopped pecans and the melted butter together. I also have a springform pan here that has been greased and floured. So as I said, pour those first three ingredients into a small bowl. And mix them together. You're going to press this into the bottom of your spring form pan. Of course, this is going to be your your crust. So this is going to go in the bottom. Now you're going to take your your 17 wafers and you're going to stand those around the side of the pan. I'm wondering if I don't want them going out like that so that when you take this off, um, hmm, I don't know, because I don't know if it'll stay. I think I'm gonna do it the other way, because that makes sense. Because when you take this out of the oven, uh, you take the pan, the, uh, the form off, and you, I think, I would think you would want the rounded side on the outside. It doesn't say that, but that's, that's just what I'm gonna do. I think it's gonna be harder to get them to stand that way, but that just makes sense to me that that's how you would do it. Bake this, put this in your oven, your 350 degree heated oven for 10 minutes. So now you want to take your bananas and put them in a saucepan. the lemon juice. Stir this. You want to have it like over medium heat. And you want to stir in the brown sugar. And you just want to leave this in here. You want to stir it for one minute or uh, stir it until the brown sugar has dissolved. And now we're just gonna set this to the side. Now you want to come over and beat your cream cheese until it is smooth. 
So there's all three cubes of cream cheese. So now you want to gradually add in your sugar. This has been mixing. My uh, crust came out of the oven. You are supposed to let it cool for 30 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to continue on with this. You want to add your eggs in one at a time and when the, the yellow disappears from the first one, then you can add the next one and then you keep going. you want to add your vanilla so now you have your mixture and you take your bananas that we did a while ago we set it aside and you want to uh, stir this in you don't use your mixer for this and then you're going to pour this into your crust and it is going to bake from 45 to 55 minutes uh, or until um, uh, the center is almost set. So I will probably go to 50 minutes. Um, so put it in here like this. And I also, it does not say to put it on a, a baking sheet, uh, a cookie sheet. But I put it on a cookie sheet because that way, if it um, if it leaks, if it leaks at all, it won't leak all over the bottom of the stuff, the oven. So I'm going to put this in, like I said, for 50 minutes, and we'll be back. So this was in, I left it for about 52 minutes because it was still really jiggly at 50 minutes. And so what you want to do, it says to immediately take a knife and go around the, um, go around the whole outside, I guess so it doesn't stick. You don't want it to, when you uh, go to take this um, spring form pan apart, you don't want it to be stuck to the side. So you go ahead and run your knife around it, but you're not gonna take it out yet. You're gonna leave it here for one hour, and you can see it didn't um, leak or anything like that, which is really good. But this is where you're gonna you're gonna use go ahead and use your cookie crumbs. Now these are your coarsely chopped cookie crumbles, and so you're gonna go ahead. And I don't know why you do this now, but you put these on right now. It said, and then we're going to leave this right here for an hour and then we'll come back to it okay this has been cooling for over an hour so now it says to cover and chill it for eight hours so i'm going to use just cling wrap just some plastic wrap i'm going to cover it up and i'm going to uh, leave it in the pan because it doesn't say anything about taking it out of the pan and i'm going to put it in the refrigerator and for us it will actually be overnight uh because eight hours you know that's a long time so this is one of those desserts you want definitely want to make it up the day before because it's so time consuming i what? see why they wanted you to cover on the edge because as it's cooling it's pulling away from the edge right and if you didn't do that it probably would have cracked all around the edges oh yeah it probably would because there's no cracks in anyway. you did an excellent job thank you very much so i'm going to cover it up and we'll see you tomorrow okay it's the next day all i've done is uncovered this and so now i'm going to Take my cheesecake out, so it comes right out like that. And the cookies, it you notice around the edge, it really didn't matter which way you put them, which direction, because uh, because you can't really see them. But now I take a um, a spatula and go up under this um, the between the the cheesecake and the the pan because it can be uh, stuck just a little bit. See, I lost 
lost some crust, but that's my fault, so. <laughs> but it's fine. So now what I wanna do is I'm going to go ahead and cut it before I decorate it. And that's just so that I could, uh, I can decorate each individual piece. So, and that cracking uh, that you see right there, that occurred when I stuck my spatula under it. That's okay though. Now you have your Cool Whip, and so you just want to take a, a little dollop of Cool Whip and put it on each um, each individual piece. Banana here, so you don't have to do this at all, but slice up a banana and then you're going to uh, uh, put a little bit of lemon juice on it just to keep it from turning brown just run it around in there like this that's it for just a second I have my cookies these are the, the leftover cookies, so you, you don't have a lot left, so you're pretty much, you're going to go through a, a box of these. So stick one of these in each piece. And then stick one of your banana slices in each piece. That is your banana pudding cheesecake. So now um, I will get a slice for Kevin and I to try and we'll be right back. So I believe I said earlier, I, I got this recipe from the March 2012 Southern Living Magazine and I was going by this picture when I was decorating. So that, uh, that was my inspiration for, for how I wanted it to look. I, I saw how pretty theirs was and how appetizing that looked and so that's how i wanted mine to look so anytime uh because the recipe was on a page like this but uh, i think it's very helpful to have a picture to go by as well just so that if you're not creative on your own you can go by some what somebody else has done and so that was very helpful to me ready? so are you ready this, these slices, uh, uh, Kevin said it, and I agree with him. They're about as big as you would get at the Cheesecake Factory. Got a big hunk of banana. Mm-hmm. I do too. I'll tell you what. I don't know that I've made a homemade crust like that that's had chopped pecans in the crust like that. I don't remember having that, but it it's makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Those pecans, you really taste them. So they, of course, they add a texture, but the flavor is really good as well. I want to try that crust. Have you tried that? No, I did from the bottom. Mmm. Crust is good. You can really mm. get that pecan flavor. You also get the butter. Mm -hmm. The butter, the cookie, the, the Nella wafer cookie, that is absolutely delicious. It's very, very good. It doesn't really necessarily remind me of banana pudding, but it's more of a, just a banana cheesecake. Mm -hmm. um, it's very good. Yes. I think the best part, the best flavor part for me is that back part. Where the, That's always the best part. Yeah, I love, Kevin and I love the crust anyway though. Um, anytime we have a pie, that we always love the, the crust. So, it's no surprise that we like that. Uh, but that Good. is absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. And um, it, wasn't, it wasn't hard to do. It was, their directions were so easy to follow. Just like bananas, because it is very full of bananas. Yes, uh, bananas and the pecans, because you're going to put those in the crust. Uh, so, if you end up making this, let me know. Um, I'd love to know if you made it and if you like it. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.